You may wonder, looking at the title, what does this whole thing have to do with demographics? Uh, me, myself, I'm not a demographer, and with my very naive, social, uh, humanistically oriented mind, for me, demographics means number and numbers and figures, and I'm quite horrible with numbers. I forget them as soon as I see them. So that's why one of the reasons why my presentation will not be about numbers. The other one is that I believe that we should also look beyond the numbers, however important they are, uh, beyond the figures to unpack some processes and dynamics that are going on in certain communities. And I will be talking, as announced, about the Voivod in a Hungarian community. And I'm sure you will hear, and you already, uh, yeah, you will hear more on the figures from my uh, colleagues. But just in a nutshell, to contextualize for those few of you probably who, who don't know uh, even basic things about the situation in Vojvodina and the Vojvodina Hungarian community. So communities so in the 1960s, it was a community that numbered around 4,000, 42,000 uh, members. Uh, then in 1991, before the Yugoslav Wars, uh, 300 and, around 340,000. In the one before the last census in 2011, 251,000, uh, and in the last census, which took place uh, last year, and the results were announced this year, it's 184,000 um, uh, uh, Vojvodina Hungarians. So over 60 years, we can see a drop, a diminishing of the community to uh, uh, basically less than half of its members. And this, this last drop in these 11 years between the two last censuses is the hugest uh, drop of all. Uh, the Vojvodina Hungarian community, like, like most, most ethnic minority communities in the region, is affected by this holy trinity of threats to, uh, to minorities, and that is low birth rates. Low birth rates in Serbia ex, uh, affect all communities uh, except Roma, Albanians, and Bosniaks, uh, assimilation to the mainstream dominant Serbian society. Uh, again, this affects most minority communities in Serbia, and emigration, which basically affects all ethnic communities in Serbia, um, minorities and, major and the majority alike, especially those uh, communities which have, so to say, easy access to emigration procedures, and with the 2010 amendments to the Hungarian citizenship laws, it's clear that the Vojvodina Hungarians are such a community. So it is a community, so to say, with the easiest access to emigration uh, right now um, in Serbia. Uh, this is not the, the first wave, of course, uh, of, of emigration, uh, even though it's the largest. Uh, the first one was in the 1960s, the so-called so Gasterbeiter emigration wave, and then in the uh, 1990s, again, mostly because of the Yugoslav Wars. This current wave of emigration from the 2010s onward that's happening now is, we could say, or the way I see it, is closest in its character to the Gasterbeiter wave of emigration because it's mostly, not only, but mostly economic in nature. Uh, but uh, unlike the, the, this 1960s Gasterbeiter wave, there is much less uh, plans for return in this wave uh, uh, of emigration, the current one. Uh, so, however, and this is my argument with this presentation, uh, I believe that the fact that people, so to say, disappear from the census, uh, so they don't live in a place, they don't live in a country anymore, does not necessarily mean that they fully lose their identity related to a certain place. So my question here with this presentation and the research I have done is, what is left of a voivod in a Hungarian identity after the shrinking of the community and uh, with the high emigration ra rates, if anything is left. Um, I have presented on this issue uh, another time, of, a, a month ago, and two people from the audience were, were there, so I'm posing the question to somebody, uh, to other people. Uh, if you see this sentence, phrase, for Hungarian speakers, do you know where it comes from? Do you have any ideas what it refers to? 
a szerbet a szerbni, a magyart a magyaron. No, oké. Okay. Um, it is a Facebook meme. Um, um, because, and I will be talking about Facebook memes, because I believe that we can capture some common features of the Vojvodina Hungarian identity among those, <coughs> both among those who still live in Serbia and those in diaspora in the virtual world. Uh, and this, and now I'm, I have a very, very, very brief academic detour. So academically, speaking about identity in such a way through virtual features, I believe that this is something that's missing from these traditional minority studies in, in which the Vojvodina Hungarian community has been framed so far mostly. Um, so these studies of, on, on especially this, the, the discussion on on, uh, on virtuality and change and contemporariness, I believe is missing from these studies on autochthonous, or as they also they're called accidental minorities. Uh, and it has been a challenge of these studies to analyze change that is taking place in communities. On the other hand, diaspora studies uh, are more apt on, on, on tackling change, mobility, transnationalism, and also the study of virtuality is much more embedded in them, in the discipline. But they are less able, diaspora studies are less able to analyze nuances of minority language and culture. So I believe that bridging the two fields, and hence the title of my presentation, that bridging these two fields of minority studies and diaspora studies can give us a more complex picture of the ongoing processes in the com in contemporary voivod in a Hungarian community, but also more generally a theoretical basis of exploring communities which are highly, minority communities which are highly di diasporic. And what comes to my mind are Vlachs, for instance, in Serbia, or Kurds in general, Pomaks from Bulgaria, and so on. So in this manner, as I said, I analyzed these two, two Facebook groups. One of them is called Rokonilonka Copyright. Rokon in Hungarian means relative. And the University of Botelut, which could be translated as something like university in front of the store. Botelut, or in front of the store, is, refers to these village uncles drinking and discussing current issues in front of the, in, in, in front of the shop. There is a, actually, Hispanic studies uh, in, the, in the US, it's, the same phenomenon exists and it's called bodega, so like drinking in front of the bodega. Um, uh, and I singled out certain topics, four of them, and the specific style that I see as some sort of a cornerstones of, cornerstones of contemporary Vojvodina Hungarian identity that connects people living in Vojvodina and those in diaspora. The style, um, I mean, yeah, actually you can see it still here. The style uh, of both of these Facebook pages, and I'll show you more examples, uh, is, uh, is the sharing of, hu of humorous memes, and there is an, a whole academic library on the topic of memes. Here I refer to meme as simply a combination of a text and a visual, which has a humorous character and is spread on the internet. So these are memes. Uh, with a post, uh, next, I mean here you see ne it, next to it, uh, a, a post uh, that precedes or, or follows it, and uh, there is a very active co uh, community of followers who also very often comment, uh, imitating the, following on the topic and imitating the style uh, of these memes. Um, in the in uh, the the Rok Rokonilonka copyright Facebook page, where this uh, this meme is taken from, uh, it is a more artistic page. Uh, it is the work of a visual artist Sabolc Vas from Vojvodina, and it has these repetitive elements of angels, flowers, and hearts mixed with objects of everyday mundane life in Vojvodina. Uh, unlike the University of Botelut. Uh, Facebook page, uh, which for its visuals uses mostly stock images from the internet or, or, or photograph photos taken by the authors, who are, by the way, anonymous, the anonymous authors of the, of the University of Botelut Facebook page. Um, both pages mimic 
what and how an elderly village person would speak. There are these cliches and the structure, and the, also the, the structure uh, is the same. As for the linguistic structure, again, both in, in both pages, the text is written as if, would, as if it would be pronounced in a rural dialect. The Rokonilonka page mimics the Hung Bachko Hungarian dialect, and the University of Botelut mimics the Banat Hungarian uh, dialect. And, and in both pages, the comments really attempt to follow also the linguistic style. So I selected, as I said, four topics that I see very important for the identity. And the first of them is rurality. As we know, the Vojvodina Hungarian community is, in effect, a small town and rural, uh, rural community mostly. So most people live or originate from villages and small towns. So this rural lifestyle, topics of you know, feeding the animals or, or, or making uh, palinka, uh, killing the animals, doing agricultural work is is not foreign to any member of the community, and everyone has a relative Ilonka or, or, or knows an uncle standing in front of the store. Um, and all these situations presented in the memes are familiar to everybody. Um, and I will, sp I will mention two main features of, of these memes connected to, real uh, to rurality, and one of them is humor, and the other one is nostalgia. So humor, it comes from from the visual alone, or, and also the text separately, uh, but also especially in the case of the Rokonilonka Facebook page, it comes also from the juxtaposition of the, of the two, the text and, and the visual. And also the humor comes from the fact that it is written in this way as if it would be spoken. Uh, and brings up these familiar situations and childhood experience, which is also a basis for nostalgia. Uh, these topics uh, of village life are very often connected to childhood when these situations were, taken, were experienced. So nostalgia is, so to say, a common effect of the authors uh, and the followers and the, the community of, of, of yeah of the of the, follow, of the community at large. Uh, for them, nostalgia is uh, really it really resonates with this classical. Uh, definition of nostalgia by Svetlana Boyn, and which is that nostalgia is a longing for a home that never was. Uh, and it has both a temporal and a spatial uh, dimension. In terms of, of time, it is definitely the, child, the childhood times, the times of growing up. Um, and also in the, in the visual style, we can say that we can basically put it uh, into the times of the 80s Yugoslavia. You can, we can see it from the, from the elements of the visuals, the furniture, the objects, the household items, the brands of clothing and food, and so on and so on. And this 80s Yugoslavia is basically the times when most followers uh, of the Facebook pages were born and grew up. Uh, 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 yeah, 80s Yugoslavia. Um, the other uh, topic that I selected as a recurrent one is the topic of eating and drinking. And it is a very important topic of both posts and comments. And it is almost always presented, eating and drinking is uh, almost always connected, uh, presented as a communal activity, something that is done together. It, eating and drinking is, brings together family, friends, and relatives. Uh, again, this association to Rokon, relative. Uh, and this eating and drinking together very often happens at or around holidays. Uh, also, certain foods are associated with certain holidays. I didn't bring you examples of this, but for instance, very often the memes present, I don't know, fish is eaten for Christmas, eggs and horseradish and ham is eating, eaten for Easter, cevap and pleskovica for, is grilled for the 1st of May, or sarma and not stuffed cabbage is eaten for New Year's, and so on and so on. And also holidays, importantly, are a time when diaspora returns home, and in that way, so the community becomes a unit again. And there is also class aspect uh, of these memes of food, because physical mobility and also class or educational mobility is needed to sort of be able to recognize the humor in this, or also to recognize that um, foods that are traditionally eaten in, in villages are, are 
from a more urban and middle class aspect considered unhealthy and greasy and vulgar. Um, and uh, uh, as an epitome of this is the topic of vegetarianism. Uh, it also has a generational aspect, so very um, quite a number of memes uh, makes fun of the fact that village food, that, that um, village relatives don't understand the concept of, of not eating meat. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this is one of, the, one of these epitomes, so to say, and the other symbol uh, in the memes of Vojvodina Hungarian identity related to food is the box. And it is a box in which food is packed to be taken away from home to somewhere else, to where the person, where the person lives. Uh, so food is being packed to be taken from home to the, to the new location. And so it very much has to do with diaspora and nostalgia. And it also has to do with this culture of poverty in a way that nothing is to be thrown away, boxes are kept because they will be useful for something else, so it has to do with this village lifestyle uh, and life in, in poverty as well. The third uh, topic that I selected as, as important is the topic of ethnic others. Also when speaking about foods, I mentioned that many of the foods that are presented in the memes are, are not purely Hungarian food, Cheva, Pleskavica, Sarmo, and so on, and they are spelled as such. Um, also some, some holidays, I, uh, I think I presented, so some holidays that are mentioned in the memes are not Hungarian holidays. So for instance, often a Slava is mentioned, uh, a Serbian patron saint um, um, holiday. Uh, and it is a way to articulate a mixed identity that is not completely Hungarian, but it is also not Serbian either. And for the same reason, it is very difficult to categorize this Facebook, I mean, there are many humorous Facebook pages, right? But this one, this, these two are very difficult to put into the category of either the Hungarian funny ones, but also the, the, the Serbian ones. And not only because of the language, but also because of the cultural references. Um, so speaking of ethnic others, uh, the source of humor here is different in the two Facebook pages. In this imaginary village where Roko Nilonka copyright takes place, it's, it's an imaginary Hungarian village in, in Bačka, probably. So the source of humor is not being able to speak Serbian very often, uh, as you can see in this meme. Um, on the other hand, the source of humor in the University of Botalut is, is the mixture of Serbian and Hungarian languages because University of Botalut is imagined to take place in a more ethnically and linguistically mixed uh, village in Banat. Um, so the source is different. Uh, so for the University of Botalut, the, 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 the Serbian language and Serbian culture is a given. Uh, and often imaginary Serbian neighbors, friends and relatives, and also mixed gatherings like th this one you can see here, are, are often in the, both in the memes and in the comments. Uh, also, ethnic othering uh, uh, appears vis-a-vis -vis Hungarians from Hungary, as you can see here. And the relationship here is that, that the, so say the periphery strikes back. So the, the center, the mainstream is ridiculed. Uh, when the, the, the own, the, the Vojvodina Hungarian, the peasant, the backwards is presented as something better, cooler, more trendy. And the fourth topic uh, that I singled out is crossing borders and transnationalism. So as I said, uh, the box is one of the symbols as I si uh, singled out to this minority diaspora identity. And the border, the border crossing would be the other, uh, the other symbol. Uh, if we think about the census, uh, what about carers? So these, these women who take care of elderly people in Austria or in Germany who spend three months in Austria and three months in, 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 in back in Serbia? Or what about uh, factory workers who work one week in, in Vojvodina and one week in a factory in Kecskemét? Or, or what about high school students who commute ev home every weekend from Hungary? Or university students who visit home from Budapest um, once a month or twice a month? These are all 
people or, or, or categories of people who are very difficult to, to look at in term with, the, with the census lens. But what is common for all of these people, and also even those who are, so to say, stationed still at home in Vojvodina, is the experience of crossing the border. Uh, and the border is, a, is a, an inspiration of myriad personal anecdotes, but also sad stories and frustration and novels and poems of Vojvodina Hungarian authors, and a Facebook group, and then later a phone app that, keeps, that helps, you to, helps you track uh, queuing times. And it is also a big inspiration for these memes, and as I said, a sort of a part of, part of identity. Um, in both pages, Rokonilonka and University of Botalot, the memes that deal with the border are visually similar. They always, present, they always uh, show the queuing at the border. That's their main topic. Um, and in terms of content, the main source of the, of the humor in both Facebook pages are these formal and informal procedures of border crossing that are familiar only to those who who have this extensive transnational experience. And now we can go back to this, this meme that I started with about which passport to show to which border guard, for instance. Uh, so transnationalism and border show up in the means, memes regarding not only diaspora members, and it, but it is part, it became part of the everyday life of also those who live in Vojvodina. And it is a team for also village aunts, village relatives, and uncles also. So some sort of conclusions. Um, the role of these pages, I see, is creating a virtual community. Uh, it is a community of us who understand this humor, a community of us who share these, these uh, memories, and they create what Sabor was the author of the Rokonilonka page, called a joy of recognition a recognition that there is more of us who share this humor and for, who's, for whom these experiences make sense. And this virtual space created in, by these two Facebook pages is a space where these experiences and memories become a legitimate topic. It is not just something that we laugh at among ourselves, but it, it gains, so to say, weight. The communities and communal experiences in general worldwide are moving online and that, that's a general trend. But in case of diaspora communities such as the Vojvodina Hungarian ones, this virtuality is even more emphasized. The linguistic dialects that are used in the pages are fr from the perspective of, of these, of these two, two pages, are, these dialects are not something to be looked down on as usually they are. But it even creates a friendly competition of, of, of among the followers of who can imitate it better, who, who masters it better. So this stigma of speaking a substandard dialect is turned upside down in a way. Uh, and being able to speak in one of these two dialects becomes something trendy. Um, also the topics of the memes, these situations and childhood experiences become a meme, for instance, an experience of, or the knowledge of um, knowing how to cook palinka, like understanding the process. It becomes a meaningful knowledge uh, that don't signal provincial, provincialism, as it usually does, in a bad sense, but it becomes something extra, something added, something valuable. It almost provides a status or a cultural capital. So through the articulation of these linguistic features, these dialectal linguistic features and the topics that I mentioned, uh, we can see Vojvodina Hungarian identity not fully disappearing with the disappearance of the community due to heightened emigration, assimilation and low birth rate, but somehow a shifting of the, of, of the identity features of being in Vojvodina to being from Vojvodina. So instead of a fixed location, these identity elements and experiences uh, move from the, from the real world to the, to the online one. And I think this is something that's very important to see, something that we are witnessing right now, and something that still awaits us to, to analyze uh, more in that. Thank you so much for your attention.